Good morning. Let's our October 12th Thursday begin. According to my schedule, um, I would require your prayer. We would have arrived in Korea this morning. Um, and we have a crazy, crazy schedule. Um, Jenny would be doing like three, almost three nights, four day kind of uh, revival retreat. Uh, inner healing with uh, Solomon's porch. Yeah, so let's start with prayer. Father, we dedicate this down to you, Lord God. Be glorified, be exalted, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You could tell that I is pre-recorded, so yeah, because once I hit Korea, I don't know whether I could continue with daily gospel, so I'm trying to pre-record as much as possible in Cambodia. So, yes. Uh, by the way, Mike Hyung, you did not check in at 5 a.m. like four or five days ago, you know. So I'm, I'm watching you. So, uh, <laughs> chapter five, verse six. Let's move on. We have given the hands to the Egyptian and to the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. What does World English Bible says? We have given our hands to the Egyptian. What does that mean? Give our hands to the Egyptian. It means then the um, Ellicott says, we have given the hand, which means um, people have been forced by sheer pressure to hunger, submit one another in prince. And here, Assyria as Babylon. And okay, you know what? Let me let me start over. Okay. We have given the hand to the Egyptian and to the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. The word English Bible says, we have given our hands to the Egyptian and to the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. Oh, the same thing. Well, let me read Young Literal Translation. To Egypt, we given hand to Asher to be satisfied with bread. So we talked about water. We talked about wood. It's a basic stuff, right? And now bread. So for Asia, it will be like, man, we are, we are forced to depend on like in Cambodian context, Thailand and Vietnam for our rice. This is very similar to what Cambodia is going through because Cambodia owns a land, huge land of land in Mekong, which the Vietnam took, or took, took it. And there's still 2 million Khmer live there patrolled by Vietnamese soldiers. They cannot get out. They just need to grow rice. Guess what? That piece of land will feed 80 million people. There are 95 million Vietnamese right now. Without that rice, 85, 80 million Vietnamese will go hungry. There's only 16 million Khmer, Cambodians. If that land still belongs to Cambodia, they just, they don't have any rice problem. Why? Because... 80 million, 80 to 85 million people's rice, it will be produced in the Mekong Delta, but now it's Vietnamese land. That's, it's, it's, right here, the scripture right here, they're saying that, why are we depending on Egypt for bread? You know, it's like Cambodians say, why are we, why are we, why are we hungry? Why? Because the land that produced enough rice for 80 million is given to Vietnam. Right? Political maneuvering. Wow. That's why Cambodians hate Vietnamese. <laughs> right? I'm not saying it is right. I'm just simply saying the history. And they're still robbing them. And uh, yeah, they should really do an international, of course, international law and uh, reclaim the land. You know, of course, they're going to fight. But the, at least the people know that that's what happened. Or at least, you know, what am I saying? Why is that important? Verse 7. Our fathers have sinned and are not 
and we have borne their iniquities. Oh, very, very important. Our fathers have sinned. And why are we bearing this sin? Right? It's like the young contemporary Cambodian kid saying that, what the hell, man? My great grand grandfather did this stupid thing. Why are we suffering because of that? Right? Jeremiah 14, 20. We acknowledge our wickedness, O Lord, the guilt of our fathers in that we have sinned against you. 16.12 of Jeremiah. And you have done more evil than your fathers. See how each of you follow the stubbornness of his evil heart instead of obeying me. Finally, Jeremiah 31, 21, 29. In those days, it will no longer be said, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and teeth of the children have set on edge. So Jeremiah answer, already answering that, saying that, listen, your sin is greater than your forefathers. You are sinning more than your grandfather, your father combined. Dude, you're being punished for your own sin. So don't ever say, father ate lemon, and, and you, feel the, you feel it, right? Just like Ezekiel. Calvin brings Ezekiel 18.2. Our fathers did eat a sour grape, and our teeth are blunted. Don't make excuses like that, saying that it's, we didn't sin against you, God. Why are we being punished? No, you have sinned even greater sin than your grandfather's. So Calvin argues this. So the prophet seems to quarrel with God when he says that fathers who sinned were no more. But as we shall presently see, the prophet confesses also the sins of those who are yet alive. And yet, ingenious confession made by the prophet had no doubt abstained here from that blasphemy which so severely reproved by Ezekiel. Jeremiah had nothing further from his purpose than to free the people from all blame as though God had dealt cruelly with them. According to what is said by hidden poet, for the sins of fathers thou undeservedly sufferest, O Roman. <laughs> so one poet said about Romans, all oh, the evil sin of the Roman emperors, the gross sin. Oh my gosh, when you read Roman history, this is, they're, they're, uh, yeah, this is so, I mean, it's kind of even the gross to mention here, but I mean, it's in the history. That they became so perverted, sexual, I mean, like homosexuality, bisexual. It was just so common. I mean, that was not even that. I mean, they believed that sperm gave life. So their queens will actually have slaves around her. In, and then they'll ejaculate and she'll take a sperm bath. And it, I mean, it's like so gross. Like, oh my God. And when Roman finally fell, the poet said, the sins of fathers, well, you're suffering, oh Roman. No. You know, no, no, it just became part of their sick culture, right? That's how Romans fell, right? Is it too much? Well, I know. Let's get out of this lamentation. Let's get to the good news. <laughs> oh, let, oh, let's. Let, uh, hmm. So, when people say that, yeah, you know, it's not my sin. I, why am I paying for paying for it? You know, I didn't do this. Yes, you did. You were part, became part of that culture. And you lived it. And you allow it to continue. You know, you said, well, I'm not doing it. Yeah, but you allow it to continue in your culture, in your people, in your other people's lives. And you kind of became silent partner, allowing that to continue. You know, it's like when when Asians are being hated because of Trump. Have you seen this? Oh my gosh, this is so crazy. So in Silicon Valley, an Asian family was celebrating and some white guy behind the table started saying that, oh, my Trump will kick your ass and kick you out of this country. Why would a white young, he, he actually was a CEO of a startup in a Silicon Valley of all places. Most educated people congregate in Silicon Valley at a restaurant. An Asian family were having a meeting, celebrating with aunt's birthday or something. Some white guy in his about 40, 50s, you know, start yelling at them. My Trump will, you know, will kick all of you to your country and you go back to your country and profanity. I mean, it's so stupid. I mean, it was videotaped. 
And guess what? And some uh, the the waitress stepped in and said, "Get the hell out! I don't want to serve." You know, get out, get out! Then she starts shouting. It made a huge news. And of course, later the CEO guy apologized. Oh, to the Chen family, or oh, I'm, I did not really mean that. I did not mean. I mean the Trump. You know, the revelation Trump when the Trump sound. The end of the world's coming, Trump. Not you know our president, Trump. You know that kind of nonsense. You know I'm I'm just making this up because I'm mad. And of course he, he was removed from his company. He had to resign. It just became too huge, you know. And and of all the Trump supporters, yeah, let's kick all the Asian go back to their country. You know the stupids do stupid things. But the the silver lining of this was that the waitress people said, hey, that waitress was brave why don't we award her and so they go fund me account was open and she sub they instantly raised hundred thousand dollar tip said let's tip that lady you know so that that when similar things happen all the waitresses in america would do the same thing you know and in not stand stand by and say oh oh i'm so ashamed oh i'm, I'm too afraid i'm just gonna let it happen i'm gonna just let that white guy black guy you know whatever ethnic group you know trash talk asians and that's okay right no you need to step you need to step in and say i would not allow that that's nonsense man you cannot say things like that not only to asian you cannot say you you, you would not say well, why don't you go back to africa you black kids you know or something you cannot do that why don't you go back to Mexico, you wetback? You cannot do that. And when that happens in front of me, I'm going to step in and say, what the hell? Who the, who do you think you are, you punk? You know, and, and I'll step in, you know, and say my mind. Right? And you sin by not doing anything about it, right? So when Bible says that, well, it was my father's sin. No, 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 no. You sin but not doing anything about it. Let the culture run its course of hate, crime, hatred, bigotry, you know, um, to continue. Am I going too far in this? Well, I don't know. Lord bless you. See you tomorrow. Mwah. Well, tomorrow will be Friday. So.